Hi everyone, I hope your day has been going well uh, and with the exam fever in the air, uh, it is now time for some pep talk to keep you going. I am sure a lot of well-meaning people have already given you a lot of tips about how to face your exams and uh, I will therefore keep this video as short as I can. Um, so this video will not be about study strategies or actual subject material. Uh, but uh, I would uh, instead like to focus on some last moment tips to keep you sorted for the big day. Uh, remember you have spent several terms studying general surgery and attending bedside clinics and the OT sessions. So now is the time to actually channel all of that learning and prove yourself in the exam. So let us focus on a couple of tips that will help you do just that. Uh, so let's talk about the theory exams first. Uh, you know that the university exam will have two papers in general surgery and I am sure that you have a rough idea of the topic distribution across uh, papers 1 and 2. Mm, however, it is uh, pretty common to see some overlap between the paper wise topics. So mentally prepare yourself for the same and flip through uh, the historical overlaps like just go through the previous year question papers and see which topics are uh, generally prone to um, overlap between the two papers and uh, generally we see overlaps with uh, uh, topics in breast uh, diseases, endocrine and vascular surgery. So just make sure that you flip through these uh, before at attempting either of the papers and uh, stay mentally prepared to answer such questions. And when it comes to actually answering the questions, make sure that you plan your answers properly in terms of time and space. I say this because it is very easy to get carried away with, uh, you know, writing page after page uh, for a very familiar topic. There is some topic that you are really familiar with and uh, it is pretty tempting to um, over, uh, you know, overdo uh, the answer writing with such topics. And uh, this is very important. Uh, it is very important not to do this because uh, it is uh, of paramount importance to consider the number of pages allotted to that specific question and also the marks awarded uh, for the specific answer. Each question carries a definitive weightage so your answers will have to be um, tailored accordingly. And this is pretty crucial because as you know in the new answer uh, booklets that the university hands out on the day of your exams, uh, uh, there are de designated fixed number of sheets for uh, each question number. So the question number is uh, usually uh, printed over the sheets and uh, the designated number of pages are fixed. You, th There is no way you can write an answer and then cut it out and write an answer elsewhere and that will not be considered valid. So it is very important to plan uh, very uh, deftly what you, what exactly you plan to write for each question and always make sure that you've read the question properly uh, read what the uh, uh, you know evaluator expects of you uh, for that particular question and also uh, plan your answer accordingly if your answer has multiple parts make sure that you, you are able to accommodate all of those uh, within the allocated uh, space and time uh, so it is also um, desirable to answer to the point right and answer to the point in points uh, make sure that your answer is presented in the form of points or flow charts or even uh, diagrams and tables wherever it is uh, you know appropriate so use these things strategically make sure that um, you uh, uh, include diagrams and uh, flow charts where they are necessary and they add value to your answers and uh, remember the exam doesn't test your drawing skills so just keep it legible and precise uh, you don't have to uh, draw very fancy diagrams just keep them legible precise and make sure that you label them properly and make sure that the diagram that you're actually drawing adds value to your answer and uh, uh, gives the examiner an idea of how thorough you are with the topic it is also a good idea to you know highlight uh, some keywords and phrases in your answer uh, by underlining them um, so there, there's also a, uh, a very important point here uh, you have to check with uh, whether it is okay to use colored pencils in your exams because currently the answer sheets are uh, usually scanned and um, sent forward uh, to various examiners so unless it is ex uh, explicitly mentioned to be okay to use color pencils uh, don't use them. Um, it is quite satisfactory to um, you know uh, write simple line diagrams and label them and that will suit the purpose just fine so just check uh, uh, check with the 
uh, invigilators or other personnel in the room before you embark upon using any things like colored pencils or pens and uh, when a question is very specific make sure that your answer is specific too if they have asked you for the surgical management of hemorrhoids just just stick to answering regarding the surgeries uh, done for hemorrhoids you do not have to concern yourself with the uh, etiopathogenesis of hemorrhoids or their clinical presentation just uh, uh, talk about the surg surgical procedures that are done um, but sometimes uh, the questions are pretty broad they, they simply uh, there, there's simply a phrase or uh, 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 simply a word, and uh, that is uh, that is all what the question says. In this case, uh, it is a good idea to add, organize your answers under headings such as definition, etiopathogenesis, presentation, diagnosis, management, and complications. So when your uh, answers are organized under these points, uh, you have a better chance of uh, conveying everything that you want to convey, and the examiner has a better uh, better time actually uh, reading your answers and understanding how well you know the topic and it is very important to stay calm organized and confident on the day of the exam uh, so uh, do not uh, uh, really uh, look at anything uh, new on the day uh, before the exam or on the day of the exam uh, stick to the material that you are used to stick to the textbooks that you have been studying throughout the year uh, do not look at, look at any new fancy textbook or notes or uh, prep material because uh, it will uh, uh, impact your morale negatively and uh, affect your performance um, in a way that you do not want it to affect uh, and uh, uh, it goes without saying that you have to make sure that you are well rested well fed and well hydrated uh, on the uh, day of your exam so now let us talk about the practical exams um, and uh, when it comes to practical exams, it is a good idea to attend those prep sessions that your college will usually hold in the gap between the theory and the practical exams. Mm, and it is uh, very important to familiar familiarize yourselves with the instruments, the specimens and the x-rays that are likely to be um, kept in your examinations and uh, you know the ones that you are likely to be quizzed on. So this will happen only if you actually show up for the prep sessions. Uh, and on the day of the practical exam, make sure that you are well groomed, well presentable and comfortable because remember it will be a long haul and make sure you have a checklist of all the things that you will need on the day of the exam such as your stethoscope, make an illuminoscope um, for uh, looking at transluminant fillings and uh, carry a pen torch, you will also need a measuring tape or scale and then you will also need a CNS examination kit and so many other things as and when appropriate. Mm, and it is also uh, very very important for you to familiarize yourself with the exam pattern uh, for example most practical exams have a long case a short case and uh, viva voc where you will be quizzed on instruments specimens operative procedures and imaging so uh, make sure that you are aware of the pattern well in advance and prepare for the pattern accordingly and you will also uh, do well if you uh, give uh, some uh, uh, some time in uh, figuring out what will be the allocated weightage and the uh, time uh, for each of these uh, components of the exam and uh, whenever you are uh, taking your uh, long case and short case be very crisp and very thorough in your history and examination and uh, write your case sheet very meticulously and very legibly and uh, before you even start writing down your case sheet organize your findings in your head and then start writing the, them down according to the uh, order uh, that you have always uh, done uh, it is a good idea to have a uh, you know a, a kind of format or a pro forma according to which you write case sheets so make sure that uh, all your findings are uh, presented in a well organized manner it is also a good idea to um, write your uh, diagnosis or uh, differential diagnosis at the end of your uh, long case and include a brief investigation and treatment plan at the end of your long case that is what is usually expected of you and uh, uh, keep in mind that you should uh, try not to be biased by any leaked diagnosis or findings which uh, usually happens uh, in the exam hall uh, remember that the examiners are more concerned with your methods, your diligence and uh, the way you process the information that you have gleaned by history and examination. They are not really worried about the final diagnosis but they are 
uh, far more uh, concerned about the processes that uh, you have employed to arrive at the diagnosis so that is what is getting tested uh, so if you stick to the basics and the sound principles of your subject uh, you will do very well so don't worry about it and while answering stay calm stay focused uh, stay humble and stay respectful to the examiner uh, and uh, remember the examiner is not out there to get you um, he's only out there to uh, find out how much you know and uh, uh, try to uh, help you to uh, display whatever you've learned learned throughout the uh, throughout the years and then uh, keep an eye out for any visual cues uh, from your examiner internal and external examiners and do not hesitate to retrace your steps where uh, it is appropriate and remember that is that this is simply your chance to display what you have been learning since ages uh, so stay calm and slay that exam all the best folks i'm sure you will do great um, have a great day bye